All right, New Zealand's drug legislation hasn't been overhauled in nearly 50 years in spite of a recommendation from the Law Commission in 2011 to do so. Our Misuse of Drugs Act was passed in 1975 and is based on a United Nations framework set in 1961. So, she's an old one. Now a new organisation, Harm Reduction Coalition Aotearoa, backed by 155 experts, is calling on the government to not only amend this legislation, but scrap it all together and wait for it, legalise all drugs. Yes, indeed. This would be a world first. Um, joining me now to discuss how this would even work or look like, uh, as well her thoughts on it, is Wendy Allison. She's the chair of the Board of Trustees for Know Your Stuff NZ. Wendy is with us. Hello, Wendy. Kia ora, how are you going? I am great, Wendy. Now, before we jump into this, I mean, I think we've spoken before. Know Your Stuff is, uh, you, your your organisation is, uh, when you go to uh, concerts and that too, you can tr uh, test drugs. Is that right? Is that part of your... Yes, that's right. Yes. Good. So we know who you are. Are you also part of these experts backing with Harm Reduction Coalition? Yes, I'm one of them. I was a founding member of Harm Reduction Coalition Aotearoa um, because from the perspective of someone who's been working in harm reduction for nearly two decades now, to me, it is a no-brainer that the Misuse of Drugs Act is not fit for purpose and that realistically, if we want to reduce harm, the most important thing we could do is get rid of that and build new law that's based on evidence. Would you say, though, and there is no country as far as I know in the world that has legalised all drugs, they've decriminalised, quite a few countries have, and they, and they work on the, on the more um, therapeutic side than the punishment side, but do you, we need to go that far as legalising? Well, yes, you are right. Nobody has yet gone so far as to legalise drugs. And I think that many people find the notion of legalising drugs quite alarming when they first, yeah. first hear about it. But, but, but it is important to stress that legalising doesn't mean laissez-faire capitalism where there are billboards selling <laughs> you heroin. Um, <laughs> there, there is a curve... Nice. <laughs> known known as, as the U-curve. And at one end of this curve, there is criminalisation, which is what we have now, and that clearly hasn't stopped people from using drugs or reduced harm. On the other end of that curve, there is complete legalisation with zero regulation, and that won't reduce harm dramatically either. Now, in the middle of this curve, there are a spectrum of options for how we can address drugs, and decriminalisation is one of them, and decriminalisation does reduce harm. For mm. example, in Portugal, everyone's quite familiar with the Portugal model now, where they have legalised, and the harm associated with drugs like heroin has reduced dramatically. But they still have an illicit market for drugs, because it is still... <laughs> it is still criminal to manufacture and supply drugs. And what that means is that people are still sourcing drugs from the illicit market and all of the harms associated with the illicit market still exist in Portugal. Mm. Um, know, know Your Stuff, for example, would still have to exist in a model like Portugal. So what we're proposing is legal regulation in which drugs are not criminal to possess, manufacture or supply, but there is strong regulation around the manufacture and supply of these drugs. So you would look at the evidence associated with certain drugs and what levels of harm you can expect from them and regulate them according to that. So a drug that is significantly harmful may only be available by prescription, but other drugs that are much less harmful may be for sale through pharmacists or from a licensed supplier in certain quantities. There are a lot of options there and what we're advocating for is for these options to be looked at instead of blanket criminalising everything, which is clearly not reducing use and it's not reducing harm. Because, mm. well, it's interesting because um, Dr. Rose Crossan uh, is a professor, who you'll know, at the University of Otago, because um, in the story she talks quite a bit about it. And as you talked about, you've just said there are various ways that you might be able to um, acquire a certain drug. And she said maybe, as you said, available by medical prescription or a specialist pharmacy 
what? my thing with that is because, and I'm not poo-pooing it, but, you know, the, the, a lot of people in New Zealand, you know, clutched their pearls and fainted when um, David Seymour announced that Seymour. Sarah Ephedrine was going to go back, you know, was going to be available at certain pharmacies. And people were going, oh, no, 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 we don't want that back because pharmacies are going to get robbed and no one's going to want it. And But you're suggesting that some pharmacies might have, or a special pharmacy might hold heroin or cocaine. Yes. Well, I mean, her- heroin exists now and is held in places um, as, as does well, cocaine. Well, it's like code. It's, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, if we, if we, we seem to be concerned about pseudoephedrine, I, I, I don't know if the thought of being able to get a very a class A drug will still sit well with many New Zealanders. Should we should we start with cannabis or do you just want the whole lot? Well, there, there was there was an attempt to uh, legalise cannabis through referendum a couple Correct. of years ago, as everyone is very well aware. Yeah. And the issue with singling out individual drugs like that and going, well, this one is okay and this one is not, is it doesn't actually address the central issue of the harm that is being created by the fact that the drugs are prohibited. So a lot of the harms associated with drugs happen because they are illegal and mm. consequently if you legalize cannabis that will that will make some people very very happy and a lot of people will go job done um drugs are sorted now but that will leave all of the harms associated with some of these much more dangerous drugs still in the hands of the illicit market and if we actually want to take control of the drug supply it is clear that continuing with criminalization isn't going to be effective so what we are saying is that it's not this drug or that drug that is the problem. Mm-hmm. It's the policy of prohibition that is the problem. Uh, do you think, do you think, Wendy, we'll, we would need a heck of a lot more, say, uh, social workers uh, in this area if we, we've got... Because um, I know in Portugal, like you mentioned Portugal before, and um, they, do, they do have... Um, they stepped up their social workers uh, to, to help people that were... Uh, you know, still wanted to take drugs, but wanted to ease off it. Are we? Are we even? Do we have enough people that could even help in this area? Um, well, the current situation that we have in Aotearoa is that we are living under prohibition in every drug that we have in every sorry every drug problem that we have in this country has developed under prohibition, and we certainly do not have enough drug help people at the moment and part of the reason for that is because we spend four times as much criminalizing people busting people sending them to jail and keeping them in jail as we do supporting people who have problems with drugs so yes we could have more people helping people with drug issues and the other thing that i would just like to drop in here is that there is a very strong bias under criminalization to